everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Kalabukas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep, deep, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking AI, startups, the future, not necessarily those and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, in the last week, we've had a number of interesting things happen in AI. In fact, hundreds of interesting things are happening in AI. And if you want to stay at the forefront of everything that's going on in AI, just subscribe to my new daily newsletter, AIDaily.us. At AIDaily.us, you'll get hand-curated breaking news in AI. In fact, if you go there and listen to that, there's a podcast, there's a blog. If you listen to that or read that, you'll be ahead of the game because stuff that appears there appears there before anywhere else. So if you really want to stay on top of things in on top of things in AI, check out AIDaily.us. Now that that ad is over, let's talk a little bit about what's happening in AI. Well, recently Microsoft is rolling out another AI copilot. That's right, folks, another assistant. You think they would have learned their lesson with Clippy? Now, many of you out there are not old enough to remember Clippy. But Clippy was a very, very failed experiment by Microsoft to create a, an assistant that would help you in Microsoft Office and in Windows and in any other Microsoft software that was out there. And it was incredibly annoying. It was a little avatar and it was sat in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And it was shaped like a paperclip, of course. And that's why they called it Clippy. Now Clippy came out of a really, really failed experiment that they came up with one day. And uh, I mean, I am going to not say anything negative about Microsoft because at least they're trying. <laughs> at least they're attempting to innovate. There's so many companies out there that aren't even attempting to innovate. Look at the innovation in the Apple iPhone. What innovation? iPhone 15? Ooh, USB-C port. Big woo. Made out of titanium. Big woo. Anyway, <clears throat> I digress. But way, way back in the annals, I do not remember what year this was. It was a long time ago. Microsoft wanted to come up with a simplified version of Windows because some people still thought Windows was a little too complicated. So somebody within Microsoft came up with a brand new OS, or maybe it was just a skin to Windows, and they called it Microsoft Bob. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, Microsoft Bob, what the hell is that? Well, I'm not going to explain it to you because... I would need to show you pictures. And since you may be listening on the radio, you may be listening on a podcast, you may not be able to see pictures, but just go to Google and search for Microsoft Bob and look up the interface for Microsoft Bob. Microsoft Bob was a, almost like a childlike interface to Windows, a super, super simplified interface to Windows. And it had a little character as well. It had a little avatar, a little helper in the bottom right hand corner that would help you through this much simplified interface, like you needed help through this interfa simplified interface. Now, you could argue that Microsoft was sort of talking down to people, but if you think about it, a lot of people are not very technical. And in this day and age, you need to be technical in able to figure out what you're doing. So hats off to them to actually try to do something innovative and different. Now, it was an absolute dismal failure, but that's not going to keep them from trying again and again and again. So they came out, they took the the bit of Bob that actually had reasonable feedback and they brought it into Windows as Clippy. I forget if it was Windows or Microsoft Office, but it was supposed to be an assistant that would help you. It would go things like, it would say things like, oh, it looks like you're putting together a letter. Here, let me help you with that. Unfortunately, like most assistants, it ended up being more annoying than helpful. So a lot of people just turned Clippy off. They didn't want to use Clippy. In fact, there was a hate on for Clippy, and eventually they eliminated Clippy altogether and replaced it with Cortana, a much more serious assistant, which was also not very helpful. And Cortana, if you can recall, was a character in one of the games they bought from... I forget what, what game company they bought, but they used the Cortana, the Cortana name as their 
helper. Fast forward to today. Well, just last week, Microsoft announced yet again another assistant, except this time it's an AI-based assistant, so that's going to make it so much better because it uses generative AI, open AI, to work. And they're calling it Copilot. So they went from a really dumbass name, Clippy, to Cortana, to now Copilot. Is there, I see a sense of pattern here. Is it they're going to they're start them all with C? Now, I haven't seen Copilot. I don't know how Copilot works. If anybody out there has used Copilot and, and what tell me what they think of Copilot, I would love to hear comments in the notes, in the, in the comments below on what you think of Copilot and what do you think of AI assistance in general? Because up until generative AI, up until ChatGPT3, up until those types of services started come, being rolled out to human beings, to regular folks like us, they weren't very helpful. I didn't find them helpful at all. And I think most people didn't find them helpful. I'm still arguing with my Alexa about things. I'm still arguing with it. It still doesn't know what I want. It still doesn't know how to pre pre present things to me at the right times. And it doesn't, uh, still doesn't understand what I'm trying to say to it sometimes. So virtual assistants, AI assistants, have really not progressed. And hopefully Microsoft, this is its third try to try and bring something to the forefront. Who knows if it's actually going to be helpful or not. But let's hope. At least they keep trying. <laughs> At least they keep attempting to create a virtual assistant. Now, my biggest problem with all these virtual assistants is that are they really helping us or are they helping the organizations that are behind them? And like I've said many times before, we need a personal AI. We need an AI that works on our behalf and negotiates with these other AIs that are out there. And until then, I'm never going to feel that I'm getting a fair shake. It's the AI against me. It's the AI against the customer. And pity the poor human. We don't have the processing power that all these organizations have in AI to be able to do what they can to try and pitch us products. So hopefully Copilot is helpful. But like I said, I'm holding out for truly personal AI that works on my behalf against all the AIs that are out there. And if you're a startup founder, that's something you should be thinking about building. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future. Mm -hmm.